One of my favorite artists is Mike Lim, aka Darken. His specialty is dark fantasy and things that go bump in the night, but his work also features a surprising amount of light, which for me is a key part of what makes it effective. Darken studied at the Academy of Arts in San Francisco and graduated with a BFA in traditional illustration. He always enjoyed fantasy and video games and played magic in high school. This was mostly around Ice Age, Revised, and Fallen Empires, all gritty sets that appear to have left their mark on him. Darken also cites as influences fellow magic artists Brom, Justin Sweet, Carla Ortiz, and Alex Konstad. Darken started illustrating for Dungeons & Dragons before joining the ranks of Magic's artists in 2007. One of these cards was Corlash, heir to Blackblade, which is typical of his style. True to his name, Darken's work generally depicts grim subject matter like monsters and black magic. His color palettes are similarly bleak. The dude's favorite color is clearly black. I've always struggled with color, Darken explains. I have a hard time making decisions, so I always start my paintings in black and white. My older paintings were really dark and muddy, mainly because I went too dark with my black and white phase. By necessity, Darken has had to start using color in his work. His solution has been to use it in a way that suits his style. His work has a strong focus on light and dark, in part because all his pieces start off as line drawings. Darken says he uses light to try to tell a story. It gives the fantastical images depth and realism. As a result, his attraction to darkness becomes an asset rather than a weakness. The contrast between bright and gloomy works well within the confines of the art box of a magic card which at 59 by 45 millimeters is a very limited space to work with. Jeremy Jarvis, creative director for Wizards of the Coast, says that the size and format of the medium are not openly conducive to communicating an awe-inspiring sense of immersion. Anyone who's had to squint at a magic card to try to figure out what it's supposed to be knows what he's talking about. But Darkin finds ways to use this small space to the max. Take Gonti, Lord of Luxury, for example, which Darkin considers one of his best artworks. Darkin says he likes this piece because he feels that he nailed the mood. The vibe is definitely intriguing. Instead of showing us this creature at night in a threatening pose, he gives us a peek of it during the daytime, hiding out in its lair. Darkin also messes with our expectations in his art for Dragon's Herald. The card represents a goblin calling a dragon. But the price is that he is its next meal, as reflected in the card's mechanics. But here the focus isn't on the dragon, which is far in the distance, or really even on the goblin, who has his back towards us. Instead, the brutal landscape is the centerpiece of the image. The curve of the mountain juts threateningly into the frame, the red rock matches the sky above, almost like Darken wants us to think about what kind of harsh world could produce such a situation. Another one of Darken's most impactful pieces is Bloodghast, a fan favorite. It's simple and graphic, almost like something from a comic. The lines trailing the deep red claws give the creature an aura of speed and movement. Here, the contrasting light and dark tones allow Darken to show the menace of the vampire with just four colors. It's no surprise that Darken's style has influenced other artists both within magic and in fantasy illustration in general. His work is always interesting, and I look forward to seeing what monsters he has in store for us in the future. Thanks for watching.